You already know what it is because you heard the title and saw the intro. This is the worst gun in shooter history, and YouTube, worst gun in shooter history means first person shooters or first person shooter video games. I'm not talking about real shooters, I don't talk about those on my channel. We're talking about video games, and we're talking about World War II guns in modern and future era games, even though I broke the rule last week by showing a Call of Duty World War II weapon. But today we're also going to Call of Duty, and we are looking at the M1 Garand, or Garand, however you want to say it, I say Grand, we're going to look at it in Infinite Warfare, and I actually decided I'm not going to play against bots for this video. I know that I said that I like to run the gun naked, which I did in this video, and then play against bots to see how hard the gun is in its easiest setting, and by hard I mean unintuitive or just overall a bad weapon. But I wanted to play online, so I got two good matches of Infinite Warfare gameplay going on in the background here. They'll run in a they'll cut between each one, I guess. Uh, there, you can you can see me choke some kills. I'm not gonna lie, you can see me choke some kills in these gameplays because I'm not used to the gun, and these were my first two matches of the day. But I think I did pretty good, all things considered. There are no attachments on this weapon, but I did decide that I was gonna give myself one benefit so that it wouldn't be a miserable experience. I ran Reflex, which allows me to reload faster. I ran Marksman, which gives me less flinch with sniper rifles, which is, I, I think, the M1 Garand is categorized under an Infinite Warfare. I think it's categorized in the sniper category. Even though it's in the classic weapons category, I think it technically is a sniper in the game. I don't know. Either way, I also ran the Merc Rig with Man at Arms, which allows me to move at 100% player speed with any gun. So that's, I guess three benefits that I was having, but I had no attachments, and this weapon is outclassed and outgunned by a lot of weapons in this game. Even though it has a really consistent two-shot kill and a really just consistent rate of fire, like, putting damage down range with this weapon is amazing, and this is probably one of the best World War II guns in a non-World War II game I've used. Just because it has setbacks, it's outdated, you can't reload it until you empty the 8 round clip, and I couldn't run the extended mags, which in this game really makes no sense. At least in Call of Duty World War II, they had the experimental box mag underneath it, whereas in this game it just magically that clip holds 12 rounds. But I guess we're not looking for historical accuracy in a sci-fi shooter. But e either way, it has its setbacks, it has 8 rounds standard, it has to be emptied before firing again, and it's semi-automatic. And there are other semi-automatics in the game that are a lot more capable, customizable, and most importantly, in my opinion, have larger magazines. But I'm actually going to brag about this gun a little bit. Even though it has setbacks, it still deals good, consistent damage. You are going to be outclassed by a lot of weapons, but if you can land those two shots, the game just basically says you deserve the kill. Now, if you shoot them in the legs or through cover, it might be a three-shot kill, but I rarely ever found a three-shot kill with this gun. And if you keep eight rounds in that clip, and by that I mean after a gunfight, fire the rest of the rounds into the wall or something, and then reload, get eight bullets, you will be able to compete against players if you're accurate and if you're fast. I know for a fact that this weapon with quick draw and foregrip and a suppressor is a force to be reckoned with. I personally don't like stock on my semi-autos, even though I know left stick aiming is very important. I like to move a little bit slower to make really precise adjustments, but that's completely up to my personal preference. This is not one of the worst guns in shooter history, because even though it is outclassed as an old weapon in a you know futuristic setting, it gives you the kills I think you deserve for using it. It gives you consistent kills, it has a fast fire rate. And the fact that you have to prestige to get it is even a bigger bonus in my opinion. I think this is one of the first guns you should get uh, when you prestige. Like within your first three prestiges, I'd recommend getting the M1 Garand because it's a powerful, good, well-rounded semi-auto, but it does have its setbacks and once you adjust to them, it's perfectly fine. Its sights are clean, its attachment options are nice. I really wouldn't change anything about this weapon. So no, even though it's outclassed by other weapons, I don't think this is one of the worst guns in FPS history. I don't think it's that bad. I think its downsides are properly made up for with a good upside, and which is a good thing. I don't like it when developers stack on unnecessary functions. Like if this gun had one more thing wrong with it or one more thing good about it, it would need a nerf or a buff. It's a consistent killer with setbacks. What else is there to say? This video is basically me praising Infinity Ward for looking at it and going, this gun has these setbacks, but this is the payoff for using it, which is a really fast, consistent two-shot kill. 
Every weapon should have some sort of trade-off compared to the weapons next to it and within the weapon itself. There needs to be some sort of trade-off. And you trade versatility for raw DPS. Honestly, I wish the M1 Grand in Call of Duty World War II was more like this one just because Call of Duty World War II's M1 I think kicks a little bit too much. I think it forces you to pace your shots too much. I liked the fire rate on the M1 Garand in Call of Duty World War II, but I think it just needed to be a little bit more accurate. Just a smidgen, just a little less vertical kick, but that's just my opinion. We'll see what happens when that game actually comes out. So now we have gone over the MP44 in Call of Duty 4 MWR, the Thompson submachine gun in Battlefield Hardline, and the M1941 Johnson rifle in Call of Duty World War II. So what are the point of these videos? I'm just looking through weapons. We're just talking about weapons here. This is a good gun. I would say this is a it's better than decent, it, which I guess is what a good gun is. But yeah, it's a good weapon. I wouldn't take it into SND. I wouldn't take it into a competitive match. I wouldn't use it to fight a clan, but it works. It's reliable. If you have an enemy in your sights and a full clip, they're gonna be hard pressed to beat you unless they've already fired first. And if you have that marksman perk, you'll get a little less flinch and you'll be a lot more likely to get the kill. Every little centimeter in Infinite Warfare matters. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please help this get to a thousand views so I can appeal the inevitable demonetization. Leave your feedback in your comments. Let me know what you think. Share the video, like the video. Thank you guys for all the nice words, support, comments, and subscriptions. If this is the first video of mine you've seen and you liked it, maybe, you know, watch a couple more videos and decide whether or not you should subscribe. I don't know. Anyway, I'll see you when I see you guys. Love you all. Goodbye. I'm in a good mood today. I got this gameplay done. I'm just going to record this commentary, put it over the gameplay, have a little music in the background, and then I'm going to go grind Destiny 2, and then I'm going to watch Netflix and fall asleep. Today is a good day for me, and I hope you guys have a good day too. Don't take things too seriously. We all die at the end of our lives. See ya.